Yes, Sameer, you understand the mind of the Modi government well. Uh, there is the reality of an impending general election next year. The fact also that whenever the government has tried to push through tough reform on farm, on land, there's been a big political pushback and out on the streets as well. Do you see the government push ahead with tough economic measures given that we're building into an election year? So, uh, I think Rahul, uh, let me respond to this in two ways. One, taking something that Martin mentioned, which is, which is fairly accurate. He says that India is unlikely to be uh, or offer what the Chinese offered when they were, um, you know, really opening up and growing. Uh, I don't think India, India is ever going to adopt the Chinese model. It can't, uh, simply because of the very different society, community and country that we are. And we shouldn't. Uh, that's the first point. But I don't believe that that is the only template or the one that uh, mercantilist America followed a uh, hundred years ago. I think there is an India way. Uh, uh, and perhaps when we are sitting here ten years from now, uh, we might have discovered it. And I, could, I can see some elements of it um, uh, unfold, even as we sit today, which is uh, a sectoral openness. So we'll pick our sectors where we want to engage. So, for example, laying the red carpet out for Apple or, you know, responding to energy, uh, electronic insecurity, diversifying the energy basket, going green, not because uh, of, of uh, the noise coming from Europe, but because it helps in our energy security uh, uh, program. So you will see an India model which will have a degree of openness, a degree of protection for communities. Uh, that's a responsibility. So even as we move to, just so that all of us know, even as we move to uh, a $10 trillion economy, in say a decade or more, uh, we would still be $6,000 per capita income. So there would be a role of the state to protect those who are in the margins. So we are never going to open up our uh, vulnerable folks to the market forces because, you know, they never trust a benevolent politician and a benevolent market. Both of them don't exist. So we will have to have a mix of both and that is going to be the India model. But we are going to do something different. We are the first economy that is really going to change the nature of who we are in the digital age. Now, the digital age lends itself a very different um, uh, landscape of possibilities, and India ex is experimenting with that. India has unleashed the entrepreneur, um, un entrepreneurship of uh, small towns, peri-urban centers, agri-retail, uh, and folks under 25, uh, to the extent no other country has before. Now, India is going to be a largely digital story, enabled by the digitalization, by big data availability, by creating solutions uh, for, for uh, you know, uh, uh, infrastructure that does not exist, uh, using digital means, uh, you, you, know, you know, so I feel that we don't know the India way. I don't think India has fully created a blueprint for where it wants to go. But like everything in India, it is going to be based on massive community participation in its transformation. It is, it is going to be based on strong governments in certain sectors, uh, openness in other sectors, and it is going to be based on, uh, of course, the role of the diaspora or the Chinese. I think that is the common story. We are continuing to see increasing interest by overseas Indians in the India story, uh, sometimes meddlesome, but, but uh, mostly positive.